What's up, everybody? How's everybody doing? We want to thank you for joining us over here on LEP Productions Facebook page. Uh, it's an honor tonight uh, to uh, to have our good friend Paul Bradford on the show tonight. We're going to be talking about his new show, Trending Fears. It's going to be featured on the Travel Channel. Episode one is going to be on December twentieth, and we are happy as hell to. Uh, to have him here but um first i want to say hey to jay what's up jay what's going on how are you guys doing man i'm i'm looking forward to having talk to paul in quite a while lucky paul <laughs> <laughs> i'm honest about it paul i'm honest about it that's so good i'm doing good Teresa. if anybody everybody's going to ask about me anyway they want to ask about Teresa. she's doing good for only being about eight nine nine or ten days now out from knee replacement surgery so but she's doing pretty good she's starting to get around more and more and uh Cause a lot more trouble for me and cause me a lot more problems. But that's enough about us. We're here about Paul. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm not important. Yeah, you. Hmm. You are. You're, you're the man of the hour right now, bud. He's always the man of the hour. This, this right. is an hour? Oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, I mean, we can do 15 minutes if you want. We can so whatever. You... <laughs> Jason. So, first of all, Paul, thanks for uh, this is our first actual live show over on the LEP Productions page. So uh, oh, okay. we wanted to kick it off, and uh, it just so worked out that uh, you were our first guest over here. So welcome aboard. Thanks for joining us tonight. And I am honored. So if, if everybody's been living under a rock for the last umpteen years and have no idea who Paul Bradford is, Jeez. can you just let everybody know who you are, what you, how you started out doing this? Oh, my goodness. You said we only had an hour. Um, <clears throat> so, um, okay, um, uh, roughly well, around 2007, no, 2009, um, I joined the crew of Ghost Hunters International, um, spent four years traveling the world looking for paranormal activity. Um, we stopped filming, I think, in around 2012. Um, I think the last episode aired in like 2013, um, and then um, after that, I continued to build equipment for Ghost Stop, <coughs> um, inventing equipment, um, you know, collaborating with other people, um, you know, and then uh, I got an opportunity last year, actually, uh, around November last year. Um, inviting me to be part of a new TV series um, that I like the sound of, really. I mean, it was, I mean, obviously through, throughout the time of not filming with, with, with GHI, uh, once, once we finished with that, I, I got offered several different um, TV ideas, different things. Um, a couple of them sounded great. Some of them sounded a lot of fun. Um, others, definitely not so much. Um, but this one, definitely, like from, from from the point of view of, of someone who wants to help, um, and for someone who actually like um, is into building stuff and all that, I mean, this was this was a, a really good fit, I think. So does that, I mean that that's who I am. <laughs> that's where you're at now. <laughs> you um. Let's talk a little bit about the, the equipment that you've built. Because right. um, I, um, obviously, um, Boo Buddy yeah. was a big hit and has been all over the place. Um, where, did, where did you guys come up with that idea? Oh, well, so basically, um, I, I was working with Sean, um, Sean Porter, um, over at Ghost Stop. Um, but I was living in Arizona, he was living in Florida. And um, we wanted initially, the, so the, the plan was we wanted to just do like a, a trigger object, like a, a bear with an EMF meter. Um, and the idea was simply very, very simple. You know, use that as bait. You know, you put that in the room, and if, uh, if something comes in here and that EMF meter goes off. Um, so I was coming up. I was I was looking into sort of building one of those, and. Um, I, I think, so the idea basically came from um, Teddy Ruxpin, if you remember Teddy Ruxpin. Um, 
right. we're old enough we're old enough to remember that one right exactly right so i texted sean that i had this idea and i was like but it basically came from what if i could make it talk and he checks his back saying do it and so i did a little bit more, more research and i came up with a way to make the bear talk so we had this emf bear that asked evp questions um, and that was basically like the first generation Boo Buddy. That was the first version of Boo Buddy. Um, from that, Sean and I are just, I mean, we wanted it to do more, obviously. Um, and so what we did is um, found ourselves um, an engineer, um, an electronics engineer, and told him what we wanted, told him what, the, you know, what it was for. Um, obviously, he'd never done anything like that before because, you know, a bear for ghost hunting, you, it's obviously not something that, that you're going to run into um, very often. Um, we gave him the specifications we wanted. We, and, you know, he, he gave us sort of prototypes. We then sent back with, you know, uh, changes that needed to be made. We tested it. We prototyped. We went through probably about two years of back and forth in and developing. And um, ultimately, what came about after that was what, you can see people know as Boo Buddy, um, you know, which it, it, it detects EMF, um, detects temperature changes, uh, vibrations, motions. Um, it, it knows its own orientation. So if it sits up, it knows it's sitting up, or if it's laid down, it will determine that it's changed position. Um, you know, but the, the thing that makes it different is it's not just a trigger object, it's an interactive tool. Um, Basically, you, you put, the, put, put the bear in the room, turn it on, um, and for the first 40 seconds, it's actually taking a baseline reading of the environment. Um, it's measuring the current EMF, um, the current temperature of the room, um, its its own orientation. Um, and then after 40 seconds, it'll introduce itself and then ask the first EVP question. And then it'll continue to wait 40 seconds before it asks another EVP question. Um, however, if something something happens during that 40 seconds, then rather than asking an EVP question, it will give some sort of verbal indication that something changed, whether it was, did you make it warm in here? Did you make it cool in here? Um, it would say something like, um, Boo Bunny is ticklish if it felt that it's been touched or moved. Um, you know, it, 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 it's the, it's, one, it's the first of its kind, and two, it's still the only, only, Thing of its kind. I mean, there is no other like it. You know, there's 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 people trying to who's been trying to copy it or make versions of it, but there is only one Boo Buddy. And you you're um, there's actually a personal uh, tie with that Boo Buddy as well, and I don't know if a whole lot of people know that. Um, yeah. Well, um, ultimately, the uh, the voice of Boo Buddy is actually my daughter from about six years ago. Oh wow! Yeah, she was she was she was six when she recorded it, and it was funny because I was like I said I lived in Arizona, so we had this house that had one of those giant swamp coolers on the roof, so it was it was constantly going. It wasn't one of these things that just shut off and come back on. It was constantly going because it was hot as hell there. So we had to like we basically what we did we made this makeshift uh, soundproofing. By sitting on the bed and putting the duvet over the top of us, the 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 the, the, the comforter, we put that over the top of us to act as a, a sort of soundproofing, and then we just read the uh, the the, the um, you know what 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 needed to be said. Um, we had to keep taking breaks because underneath the duvet was very hot, so we had to keep taking the cover <laughs> off and then back on, and then she would have her laughing fits and things like that. So we had to stop, and but yeah, you know, it, it was a lot of fun though. See that's and that's cool, man. It's, um, I've we've been actually able to use Boo Buddy when you've brought it a few times, and um, it is actually a a, a a neat piece of equipment to sure. to use when you're investigating, and it's not just something that sits there and and records something. It actually is serving a purpose mm -hmm. and is measuring actual things that are happening in the room. And I I think that's uh, I think that's pretty damn cool. Well, what I <laughs> And then I also got a comment on it, if you don't mind, that, that one of the things I really liked about it is it, with it asking the questions, it takes out some of the human error into it. It actually. Exactly, I mean, the thing is, so obviously, very obviously, it's a teddy bear, okay? So in that respect, we're looking for spirits of child, you know? And it doesn't matter how 
how lovely we are and how how very personable we are, you know, a child spirit may not want to come out to us. Okay, so what we do is we put the bear in the room, put a camera on the bear, put an audio recorder in the room, and leave. Let the bear do the investigation. That's that's so cool, though, because it does. It takes out a lot of the human uh, misinterpretations of things. It allows it right. to the equipment to actually do their job, and and then you just read the data, and that that just it changes the perspective for for a lot of people that way. Mm-hmm. Which is so cool. I mean, that's just one of the things I thought was just absolutely neater shit about it. And I'm not Absol- really going to use one. And, and then it's the, the pause, the 40 second pause. Because, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of times when, when you're with people that are investigating or new people or just people that are excited as hell, you don't give that opportunity for a response. It's, you know, can you tell us your name? How old are you? Mm-hmm. Do you know where you are? And you keep asking those questions one after another without giving a, a chance for anybody, like a regular conversation. If you're not giving somebody the chance to answer, then chances are your, your evidence is going to be all jacked up too. So I like the pause in it as well, where you're actually giving the opportunity uh, for a response. Like Jay was saying, and taking out the human, the human yeah. or the human aspect of it. Well, we also have an app. I don't know if you're aware of that, but we have an app version as well. No, I did not. So- no, so basically the idea behind that is it's a very simple, it's like a soundboard. Um, but it has the Boo Buddy question. So it still has Boo Buddy asking the questions. But what the idea was is that you could link your phone to like a Bluetooth speaker and you can put it in a room and then you could just sit there and press the buttons and have it ask the questions. Or you can set it on like I think an automated version so it will run through the questions for you. But the questions are a little bit longer. There's... Um, you know, like um, it's uh, the bear was saying, sing, twinkle, twinkle, little star, you know, and things like that. So, you know, in that respect, like it, it just because the other thing was, is we were restricted with time, like each question and each other response had to be a certain time. Um, so we had to like edit it down so for the original Blue Buddy, but for the app, we could have full, full questions and, and you know, like I said, they sing with me, twinkle, twinkle, little stuff. And so, you know, they, the app would, uh, would do that. Huh. It's like an expansion almost. Gotcha. I didn't know you had an app. Yeah, it's called yeah, that's something. Gotcha. You guys have to there, check that out. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, do you have to go, is it like Apple Store or? Yeah, Apple Store or Play Store. I think okay. it's a few bucks. It's just a few bucks, but yeah. That's, okay, that's, that's one ahead, thing Jeremy. I'm looking at. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's one, I'm going to definitely go be checking it out because with our next season, what we're doing, I'm definitely wanting to try new things. I, I, I'm I, wanting to get away from some of the more acceptable things and get pushing things into another level. And I've never heard of the app or, or seen it used. So. Right. Well, see, the idea for the – don't know if, so I don't know if you guys even remember, but Scott and I – had an app. No, Here's I didn't one. know. Yeah, so Scott Tepperman and I. So I had a whole thing about how apps are really kind of like useless. You know, for like the ghost radars and things like that. There was, there was, you know, there were just basically games. Yeah. And I, I remember I did, a, I did a seminar at one point and someone was asking me about the ghost radar and then I explained to them what, you know, ultimately it's like a random word generator and, and things like that. And then, you know, there's, there's really no, nothing scientific about it. The, 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 the best app you could probably use for ghost hunting would probably be a recorder or something to ask EVP questions or something. And then that was when we had the idea. I was like, well, hang on. Why don't we just do that? So there's, there was. I, I think it's still available in, like, the Play Store, but I don't think it's available on Apple. Um, but it's just a, a soundboard with, like, me asking some EVP questions and Scott asking EVP questions. And you just press the button and it's just, you know, and that's basically like a, a, an older version of it, like the Boo Buddy one. Boo Buddy's one a little bit better than that, but yeah, it's, it's just, it's a soundboard. That's absolutely cool and heck. I'm going to go check it out. Let's see if I can find it. Because I get yeah, the old... you Android, I think it's still available. Well, I don't yeah. think it's available. I got an Android. I'm not, a, I'm not an iPhone guy, so I've got the old school oh. throwback. Jason makes fun of me for it. Well, no one's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> we know I'm not. Perfect dipshit, maybe, but that's about it. <laughs> but I'm honest but, about uh, it. Is any other equipment you want to talk about that you uh, that you've done over the years or is available 
Hey, you still have a lot of stuff with Ghost Hop, right? Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, all, all the stuff that I've invented and, and made and whatnot is, is available at Ghost Hop. Um, my IR lights are still available at Ghost Hop. And the other cool thing here, so this is actually kind of funny. So um, when we were recording the new show, um, we've, we started off with like a sort of pilot episode. And they did, they only had like one night vision camera or two night vision cameras at the time. And I was like, guys, we're going to need to have more than that. You know, you guys are going to be filming in night vision as well. Um, otherwise, you aren't going to see anything because we're in the dark. And so when we came back out to film, they bought a bunch of IR lights and some better night vision cameras. And all the lights were the ones that I made. They're the ones that I designed like 10 years ago. <laughs> That's funny. I we yeah. I I still use uh, a couple um, yeah. on our on ours. Um, actually, one of the two cameras that we filmed all six or seven episodes of season one uh, was one of your creepy hollow lights. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah, yeah I, st they I still have one of the first ones I built. It's in my equipment case, and it still works. You know, that was the thing. So I built those. Around 2007, 2008 is when I actually designed those, when I actually built those. And um, they're basically exactly the same now as they were back then. Um, with the exception of the, the actual hot shoe mount, which is now 3D printed, um, everything else is basically exactly the same. Wow. Um, gotcha. Yeah. They work so good. <laughs> See, we've never name dropped that either in a, one of the episodes. We're gonna have to next time. <laughs> you don't have to name drop. Sure. Oh, they are the ghost stop. Sure, man. We have to do that every once in a while. <laughs> Let people know what, I mean, what we're using. Other than the other light that uh, uh, Jay and uh, well, Teresa won actually. Yeah. Um, during a convention or whatever, uh, is a fantastic light as well. All the stuff that I ever. I ever purchased and anybody ever asked me, I always steer them towards go stop. I, I think that, I think the business is good. I think um, the customer service is good and the quality and the, and the equipment is fantastic. So That's awesome. I, yeah. I, we always go there for that stuff. Yeah. Um, no, I think they, they, you know, it, it, customer service goes a long way with whatever you do. I think. And so, yeah, I agree. That's, you know, it's the only place you can get my stuff. So let's jump into the new show. Sure. Tell us how all that began. Did you, um, who reached out to you? How does that, because a lot of people, I, I don't think un, people understand how um, you get contacted for a show or <laughs> things like that. So, if, you know, just give a little sure. background on actually how you got contacted. Um, so basically I received a call Actually, what happened is I think someone reached out to Sean actually at Ghost Stop because they were looking for someone who builds stuff. And Sean directed them to me. Um, and so they called me and did a sort of online Skype interview. And um, apparently I was one of four people they interviewed. They actually interviewed four different people for this position. Um, and I happened to read their, their notes as well because they, they sent me the – first like the, the pitch for the show and on there was also the notes from the um the interviews um you know and there was there was some pretty strong contenders that's for sure i mean there was there was some good good competition there and um i was i was very lucky to uh actually get a get get chosen to be to be the you know the guy um and that was back in like november of last year um and then after that, it was like a waiting game. Um, you know, we'd hear something and then it would go dead again. Um, it was one of those sort of hurry up and wait situations. So um, around about, I think it was around about April, I was asked to fly out to Texas and meet everybody, like meet the production company, meet the, the, the other cast members. Um, and so I flew out, met everybody. It seemed, it seemed good. Everything seemed to you know, gel pretty well. Um, you know, one of the things that I really, really appreciated from these guys is that they were interested in what I had to say. You know, um, 
with previous, let's just say with the previous production companies, um, you know, I was just talent and I just had to do what I was there to do and leave again. You know, it was like the, there was already a, a format, there was already a formula and they weren't going to deviate from that. And I just had to do, you know, sort of fulfill my part. Um, and I would obviously try to fulfill that part, but, you know, still do my thing. And they would cut it however they wanted to cut it. Well, with these with these guys, you know, they genuinely, like, were interested in, in, in my opinion. They would come and ask me, you know, well, what do you think about this? Or how do you think we should do this? Um, and that was a breath of fresh air, I'll be honest, because, you know, it's like my opinion actually matters, you know. And, uh, you know, I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed working with these guys, and I, I definitely hope to, to work with them again. Um, you know, they... they um, they actually were a very professional group. Um, they're the Texas Crew Productions. Very good, good people. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, as I said, we, we ended up um, flying out, I think it was like May or June. Uh, I think it was June. Uh, oh, it could have been July. I think it actually, you know what it was? It was, um, it was around May that we flew out and filmed the pilot. And in July, we went out and filmed the um, five remaining episodes. And uh, yeah, the rest is, uh, I mean, it took over a year from talks to it actually airing. But uh, yeah, it actually airs um, this Friday night, uh, the 20th. And uh, it's at 11 o'clock Eastern, <laughs> which I think, I think that works out around about eight o'clock on the West Coast. Yeah, so, that's cool. Yeah, that's very so, cool. Yeah, it's I, I'm I'm excited. I, I'm definitely gonna be standing up to watch it. I, I, I I'm not kidding, man. I haven't had cable in years, but because of uh, you getting on the, this opportunity, uh, a couple other friends of ours got on some other shows. That's I that's for some reason I got a cable in the last six or seven years because I actually know people's gonna be in these shows. And it's people that I actually respect in the field and and and, and value their opinion. It's just not somebody that that I don't know anymore. It's, Becoming more personal about it now, and I, I, I can't wait. Can't wait to see how it goes. I, I appreciate that, Jay. See, I, I can't. Yeah, guess. I, I guess I'll watch it. Guess my <laughs> ass. I know I'll be up watching it. <laughs> you have it's, it's, already set. <laughs> it's it, it is actually. Uh, <laughs> so I know we've we've talked about your uh, your your previous run with Ghost Hunters International. Yeah. And and now with Trending Fear. I know that when you talked about with uh, with GHI, it was always uh, keep a bag packed. You never know what you're doing. You never know when you're going to leave, right. and then you're just gone for a while. Mm -hmm. Was it the same this time around? Um, the, I think the original plan was to be out. I think it was it, originally it was going to be like eight weeks filming six episodes. Um, but that turned into a little well. So they basically condensed it, but we had to fly back out a couple of times to a different to just um, to do a couple of things. Um, so it, I think it sort of turned into like ten weeks. Um, but then that was it. Yeah, ten weeks, and then then ultimately it, it it goes to the editors and they make something of it. You know, we give them the footage and they make something of it. So yeah. Gotcha. What. Um and I and I gotta I gotta give you a round of applause. Uh, again, I'm not sure how many people know this, but you got picked up to do this. Yeah. You're uh, you're working a full time job. All you get this to go. All the while you're planning a beautiful wedding. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, and and getting married all in the same time. It's a uh, it seems <laughs> like it'd be a whole lot to manage, man. With just you know you and your beautiful wife Sonia. I, yeah, that's, just, that's a lot to do in a in a short amount of time. Yeah, well, and we were still getting moved in as well. I mean, so we moved into our house in August of last year, um, and there's still boxes in the garage that haven't been touched. Um, and then we added more boxes with all the wedding stuff. So that that was, yeah. And I'm trying to sort out my um, my my den as well, um, so that I actually have you know, room for the stuff that's in the boxes from when we moved in. So it's it's an ongoing task, but yeah, I mean it's 
been a hell of a year. It really has. You know, oh, I, yeah. I've, I've been reading a lot of people online saying, you know, um, you know, 20, 2019 was a rough year and hope 2020 is a, a, a good year and all that. And I was like, well, you know, and I do, I hope it is a good year for them. And I, you know, I hate that they, you know, it's sad that they maybe had a rough year and, and, you know, I hope things do pick up. But for me, this is a good year. Yeah. I'd say That's so. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you had a lot of positive things happening. And uh, Mama D's up in Canada, and she couldn't help but notice your uh, Captain's America show behind you. She made me a comment about that. She liked that. Yeah. Captain America, I've got my Daleks up there. Can you, uh, sorry, if you can see all the way up there. Hang on a minute. Just, uh, <laughs> you see the Toy Story? Oh, there? yeah. Yeah. Okay. Heck yeah. Um, and that's all stuff you make. You, well, I didn't make Buzz and Woody and stuff like that, but yeah. No, no, the shield and the. Well, there's, there's my Nuka Cola bottle cap um, uh, 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 thing. I mean, I could give you a tour. It's a mess down here, but there's all my Ghostbuster stuff stuff on the wall over there. Which you all, like Jason said, which you make a lot of that. I do make a lot of stuff. I make a lot of props. I made, um, I made K9, which is my dog. Um, I made uh, BB-8, full-size BB-8. It sits in the corner. He's just over there. Um, I've got my Predator mask over there. Um, like I said, I've got the, the, the Ghostbusters. I've got um, some guns up on the wall, but they're not like, I'm not American yet, so they're not real guns. But... <laughs> right. But that's coming. <laughs> like rape guns and shit. I'm not um, American yet. <laughs> yeah, not yet. Um, the, the, dog, the dog he has is remote control. And yeah. actually, it actually brought down the rings at his wedding. It was my ring bearer. Oh, that's was, orange was, crap, man. I don't know if I can change the view on this. Can I do that? Yeah, so hang on. Hey, look. And if you can see that, but there's my proton, proton fat. Let's turn that on. Look, there's slimer up on the thing. I see you going to get people wanting to commission some of these things now. You better watch it. you be building like crazy. Yeah. And contact Paul Bradford for all your <laughs> entertainment needs. Yeah, that's, that, that's Sonya's backpack. That was completely custom as well. That's a completely custom backpack. Um, but yeah. Heck yeah. <clears throat> you know. Absolutely awesome. But like I say, it's a mess down here right now. So Well, you're moving in, you're you're moving around, you're building things, you're filming things. Okay. Just, busy. It's not like you're just sitting around in the basement uh, or your office cleaning and stuff. Yeah. I'm, I'm making magic wands. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. And you, you're actually selling a ton of those right now, aren't you? Yeah, I just, um, yeah, I just uh, sent some more out today. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. And they're the ones that are from the wedding, you know. That's I, I, I made these magic wands because um, obviously the wedding was very sort of um, well, it was very geek themed. I mean, we had you know a lot of different genres. Um, there was a lot of Harry Potter um, references and stuff in there, and. Um, you Game know, of Thrones. Game of Thrones. I had the Iron Throne that I built. Um, but yeah, I, what I did is I made a bunch of these wands for like place settings. Um, and then some people asked me if they could buy one, you know, buy some. And then I started, I was like, well, you know, I'll see if this would actually take them. So I made a handful of them um, and I put them up on Facebook to see if they would sell them. People were like all over it. So um, yeah, it was, that, was, that was pretty cool. So, where can where can they let's let's do let's do a shameless plug where can they uh <laughs> we're good for that aren't we where, where can you buy them um yeah send me a message <laughs> i don't have a show <laughs> <laughs> shoot me a shoot me a, a, a private message on uh, twitter or instagram um it's just ghost guy paul all one that's, word ghost guy paul that's what i was looking for ghost guy paul yeah i'm the ghost guy on twitter or instagram <laughs> Same yeah, a message. Yeah, same one. <sighs> they're actually yeah, my, they're, they're cooler. Facebook, hacks. For some reason, every time someone searches for me on Facebook, it comes up with my private page, and not not necessarily my public page, which I don't don't get. I and I, I try to make my other one private, um, and yet it still comes up on a search. So I don't know. I just keep getting these friend requests from from people, and like they're supposed to be going to the other one, you know. But yeah, so that's why I sort of. At this point, I just sort of, uh, I link my Instagram to my Facebook, um, and then obviously Twitter is its own thing. See, I don't, I, I'll never find you on Twitter. I can't even figure out how to use Twitter, but we'll just let that go. Yeah, well, <laughs> it, 
I, again, I, I, I well, I, I, I'm not great with social media, um, and I, I've been I've been trying to get better at it. Just sort of keep things consistent and more regular, you know, and just try and keep things going. Yeah, but it's, it's tough. I mean, you know, especially when you when you got you know like 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 we we're saying, you know, I've got all these other things going on that it just it makes things difficult sometimes. Yeah, if is you your to... fan is your fan page labeled differently than your? It's not good at all. It's um, I think it. So I think it's TV's Paul Bradford. Okay. TVS yeah. Paul Bradford. Mama. Like, from what I, I, I think it's like a capital T and a V, a small S, and a capital P for Paul and capital B for Bradford. There's a uh, Mama D Angel. Uh, put our don't even Mama D Angel. Put your uh, link to that page in the chat room for everybody. So that is Paul's perfect. public page. Oh, cool. So. Click on that link right there, and you can go follow along on his public page. I know everybody deserves to have a little bit of a private page, and please, by all means, please respect that and go follow on the public page here. That'd be the coolest thing to do. You also be able to see what he's got linked to it, so you can see all how the things that he's building, the wands, all that things. So follow along with that one right there. The link is in the chat room. Thank you. Hell yeah! So trending fear. Trending what, fear. Uh, what's yeah. what is the what's the preface of the show? What what are we? What, what's so, it about? Basically, what it is is I don't know if you, if you guys know uh, Jay. I know you definitely won't know. Um, <laughs> but there's a there's a gentleman named Adam Ellis, which uh, my he, which Katie is watches right. all his stuff. Yeah, he's, that's that's why he said you wouldn't know Jay because it's the the it's kids a, man. It, thing. It, it, well, it's, he's 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 got a, a, he's a millennial. He's got that millennial following. He used to be on BuzzFeed. Um, but he posts a lot of like cartoons. He's a cartoonist as well. But um, a few years ago, um, he uh, was living in New York. He still lives in New York, but he was living in a different apartment. And things were happening in his apartment that he could not explain. Um, and he started documenting it through Twitter. Um, and ultimately, like he he was the way the way that it was is he was being haunted by a child ghost um and he gave the name david um and so he had this thing and you can you can hashtag uh, dear david and it will come up with the whole like the backstory and things like that um because he documented this over a period of, you know quite quite a long period of time and different things were happening in his apartment he would film stuff and post it um he would you know um write about what's going on ask questions and things like that now the premise of the show is we're looking for people who are also experiencing stuff, but didn't have that sort of following. He had a following of people, you know, and so he had a voice. He was reaching out and people were giving suggestions and people were giving him, but there's people out there who don't have, you know, a million followers. You know, there's people out there who, you know, are just trying to get some answers, right? That's that, that's the premise there. So we, you know, ask for people to come forward, you know, who's experiencing what, if someone experiences something, you know, um, who feels like they're home. And we got a plethora of, of different people writing in, um, but there was a few of them sort of stood out to us. Um, and, the, you know, we, we contacted them and there was a little back and forth and, and uh, you know, we actually go out there and we generally try to help. Um, you know, and that's that's the thing. This is This is a different format than what, any of the other ghost shows are, are doing or have done. You know, this isn't the, the cookie cut ghost hunting show. You know, this is, you know, um, it's different. It's a lot of stuff. I mean, I mean, I can tell you that I, you know, that there's a lot of stuff that we did. You're not going to see because we only have an hour and, you know, we did a lot. We had a week to investigate and we did a lot of research. We did a lot of, uh, we re reach out to like, um, historic associations, uh, libraries, um, people who lived in the town for long times and, and things like that, people who have heard the stories. And, and you know, we investigated everything. Um, and then obviously then I came in and done the ghost hunting stuff. Um, but yeah, it's, um, it, I, think, I think people are going to like it. You know, I mean, I think the problem is, is a lot of shows are very similar. Um, and I mean, you know, it's not necessarily a problem. You know, I... 
I listen to The Offspring because I like the way that they, their music sounds. And it all sounds in that same sort of happy rock type, you know, it's what I like. So people who like Ghost Hunters and like Ghost Adventurers and like Ghost Nation and all the, you know, the holes of files and things like that, you know, great. That's, you know, that, that's because there's a style that they enjoy. Um, and I'm hoping that, that the style that we've approached is going to be one that people enjoy as well. It's a it's a interesting concept for sure. Right. Because well, I mean, you're right, it's not is is literally like threaded into our lives now. You know, we can't get away from it. As much as as much as Jay can't get away from it, he's broadcasting on it right now. You know, right. it's it's you are you are entwined in social media, regardless of how much you fight it. You know, resistance is futile, and so we we basically in, incorporate that and we use it as a tool. You know, there's, there's things that, that I've, I discovered during the investigation that I reach out through Twitter and say, hey, this happened. Does anybody know why this would have happened? Or, you know, does anybody know what this means? Or, you know, and I get responses because my following on, on social media is very paranormal based. It's, it's, it's different ghost people, you know. And so there's the people, you know, like, who have like minded, but they're, they're experts or they're enthusiasts in a very specific thing. You know, so there's people who, who know Wiccan, there's people who know Native American history, there's people who know Native American symbols and hieroglyphs, and you know, you've got the UFO guys and your Bigfoot guys, and you've got all these different people, and, and using social media as a tool, as a resource. Um, you know, because I'm not necessarily the smartest guy in the room, but I will surround myself with Well, well in this room you are. <laughs> well, <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> Just stating facts here. Hashtag fact. Hashtag truth. <laughs> what are we? We're, we're you're you're in Ohio. Where are you? Indiana. Oh, he's in Ohio too. Yeah, I'm in Ohio. So, in Ohio? I'm not too oh. far from. Oh, you're Middletown, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. He's only about forty-five minutes from me. I'm oh. I'm in Middle Tucky. <laughs> you're up in Toledo. Yeah. He's like ten. He's like ten minutes from your boy Brian. Oh, really? If even that. Wow. Yeah. So, but it's 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 a small world, man. It is. It is. I'm looking forward to the to the show because I'm I like I said I've I've heard you describing it about a new going at it from different ways and and I agree about using the social media it it is something we can't get away from, but I like how you said it's it's a tool and that's what mm. a lot of people don't understand that it truly is nothing but a tool it's a way to socialize or social network it's not a lifestyle it's a tool. Mm -hmm. And and I like that you you emphasize that and and that you're mm -hmm. going to use that as it is because it shows people actually using it in a in a, in a true light of what this is designed to do. It's it's, yeah, it's a networking tool. Yeah, sharing of information. Right. So that's that's so cool to have that somebody to actually say that and take that approach to it and use it and and I respect the hell out of that. Well, thank you. See, I showed some intelligence. Yeah. Now I'm done for the night. <laughs> yeah, Jay's a one and done kind of guy. That's. <laughs> Don't so you 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 have another person on the show, Jen Lewis. How how does how does Jen fit into the? So she's Adam's best friend. Um, they work like together. They work in together. real like in real life or just yes. on the show or? No, 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 in real life. They work together yes. on BuzzFeed. Um, they're both doing their own thing now. Like work wise, they both do their own thing, but um, they still remain you know their best friends. Um, and so as far as the sort of the show's concerned, she's our documentarian she's our sort of researcher as well um i basically send these guys out to do stuff you know um or, or explain the best way to approach something from my experience or you know i, I would suggest yeah this is what we probably should do although there was this one one investigation um where um it was time to do sort of you know i needed to, these guys to go out and do some research um, and one of the things that we were going to go research was this uh, train train museum. Like it's a little little train museum, um, and I'm just a giant nerd anyway. So I was like, "Well, you guys do that. I'm going to go do the train museum because I wanted to go and see what the trains and stuff." Because they had one of those model train sets in there as well. So I just wanted to go and play with that, to be honest with you. But um, yeah, that was so. I, I, you know, when when it comes to things like that, I I, I won't do it. So, that yeah, would be I awesome. did some research. <laughs> gotcha. Is there is the um, the format of the show? Is it pretty much set up the 
the same, you know, you, you do the walkthrough, you, you talk no. to the people, you do the investigation, you sit down and re or do the evidence review, tell them what you found. Is it, is it, is that I mean, what people are going to expect or? Um, no, I mean, to a degree. Yeah. I mean, that's, cause that's how you would do it anyway. I mean, there's no real getting away from that. You get sure. there, you do the investigation, you reveal what you found. Um, but there's a lot more steps involved, you know, like I say, with the, uh, with the element of social media as well. Um, and the fact that we are going out and doing research, um, the investigation isn't like the main part of the show. It's just as much as important as everything else, if that makes sense. A lot of these shows, you know, you'll see them in the car and then, uh, then they're at the location, they do their walkthrough, um, and then it's set up the equipment. And then it's like, so that, that whole part took, five minutes or three minutes then it's like 20 minutes of investigation and then it's like three minutes of them reviewing and then 10 minutes of the reveal so the main the bulk of the the, the show is the investigation well i think what we're going to find with this one is that there's sort of equal parts throughout you know yes there's an investigation because otherwise why, why am i there but you know um there's also other things that you know, while they're doing something, I'm doing something. While she's doing something, he's doing something. And, you know, so, um, yeah, I think people are going to like it. I think, I think, I, I don't know, I, I, I like it. Um, so I think other people will. I, I like that approach. Though. You're showing a true balance of what it is. It's, it's, there's so much more involved with the field than just investigating. And you're giving, right. it, you're giving emphasis to the whole process, what really truly goes on. Not just, right. let's all go sit in the dark and talk to the wall. There's, there's so much research and everything else that's done also that, that usually never gets brought into the situation. And the thing with this as well, though, so one of the other things is that I did all the, uh, the evidence review. So I did that. It wasn't like, I mean, we did that with GHI as well. Like with, with GHI, it was spread out with everybody. Everybody did a bit. But because these guys didn't really know what to listen for or what could be, um, I took the reins and actually did a lot of the, the review myself. That that's a lot of that's time. kind of what I was trying to hit on with mm. trying to get you to tell about Adam and Jen mm. is that they're not really paranormal investigators. They're yep. like he was just experiencing experiencing some things in his in his uh, apartment. He right. was documenting things, mm -hmm. and I think that having people that aren't I don't say the word tainted, but aren't um, haven't done this. Right. And, and to, and to put them into that, um, to put them into that atmosphere, to put them into that, uh, stuff is, I think is going to bring something else to the show that, that not a lot of shows are doing. Sure. Um, and I, and I think that's cool. We, that brings we a whole new a lot, dynamic. We had a lot with our, with our show that we're doing, mm -hmm. um, with our editor, he, he came on and run a camera with me and then started getting more and involved in it. And, um, he had never been on a paranormal investigation ever. Right. So no. getting responses from him is, is fun. And I think I'm, I'm only assuming that it's funny sometimes too. <laughs> right. But I, I would only assume that having two people that haven't investigated involved in this, um, you know, learning and, and, and experiencing this stuff with you is, uh, it's going to bring a lot to the show. Oh, for sure. And the other thing is, is the, uh, the production company has also never made a ghost show. So like, oh, that's cool. there was no sort of watching other shows or we've done it this way in the past so and it worked. And this was all new, which is great from my point of view. It was great because I, I there were things that I, I've seen and the, the, have been done that I'm like, why are we doing it this way or why do we do it that way? And I, you know, and that's what I was saying at the beginning. This production company was really interested in what I had to offer, not just in front of the camera, but also behind. Um, you know, and, and they, they wrote to me several, you know, numerous times, you know, uh, thanking me for my input on this or that. And, you know, and it was, it was just an absolute pleasure to work with them. A fresh perspective is going to be, it was, and, and it a was whole new great. dynamic to it is, is phenomenal. And I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I really am. It's, uh, I know it's usually past my old, man, old man. playing it up too much and then you guys are going to be all disappointed. No. Like, oh, <clears throat> <laughs> There's. 
there's the only way that somebody can be disappointed into it is if if they're not wanting to come into something with a new perspective. If they're going into this looking for the same old, same old, and I don't mean this in a negative way. I really don't because our show is based off some, uh, what we're doing is based off some of the same old, same old. So I can't. It's not that I'm knocking it. It's just it seems to be the formula that's working. Somebody's coming out with a new it perspective. Is, and, that's, that's the problem. You, 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 you're right. It's a formula that works. Right. And it does. I mean, you know, you watch most of these shows do have a very similar formula. Right. And it doesn't matter whether it's on networks or on YouTube or anything else. No. It doesn't matter what format it's on. It's, still, it's a formula that it works. And it's, that's it's what I'm saying. It's to break from. Yeah. And it's, it's well, something to, to break away from. And that's why I'm right. looking forward to it. And so if you're going with an open mind and, and with a new idea of a new dynamics pers perspective on things, then you'll, you'll, you'll take away something from it. I'll guarantee it. One of the things I really did like, though, is, is how quickly these guys did pick it up. Like me, me explaining something, they just went out and they did it, and that was pretty cool. I, I and then Jen actually did really well. I mean, she took to it really, really, really fast. Um, so I was, I was pretty impressed with the, um, with the, with how quickly they they were able to adapt, because it's a different world. It really is. I mean, you guys know that. Oh yeah. It's a complete different world, you know. And you can't be a person who gets bored easily either. You know, you 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 know, you've got to pursue it. You've got to you've got to be patient and, and wait and you know it's not easy it's nah. really not actually no and i'm i'm happy i'm happy for you that you've um been able to have this uh experience with with sure. this production company and everything that actually is willing to listen to you because i i think and not just because you're one of my best friends but i i honestly think that the way you come about and think with the paranormal and are able to do different things outside the box. I think um, that you, you do bring something more than just your average investigator. And I'm happy that there's a production company out there that's actually willing to listen to you and take your input and actually use it. Cause I, I think if they don't, they're, they're losing, um, you're, you're losing quality. You're, you're losing, a lot of information, and I, uh, I, I have nothing but respect for you, brother, in, in, in this whole field. I, well, I, I think do. you're doing great things, man. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I can't agree with that anymore. <laughs> yeah. Well, on that note, I... Uh, 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 right? Watch Trending Fear. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, seriously, I, I think that, you know, a lot of times, like you said before, it's you get this production company and it's going to be this way and we don't want to hear any of your shit. We just want you to show up and do this and, and make an episode. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of times there's, there's a few people that, that I personally know that are getting the opportunity to do this. And I think that it's, it, it, it's only helping the field right. by letting people who have knowledge of certain things Express share it. it to get it out there. Yeah. Right. It's, and that's how it works. And that's, again, that, that takes us, that goes full circle. That's what this whole social media element of it is. There are people out there who are very knowledgeable, but maybe don't want to be on the camera. There are people who don't want the, the limelight, but they're happy to sit behind their keyboard and help you out. You know? Sure, so absolutely. That, again, it's, it's, it's reaching out to, the, you know, to everybody. I mean, this isn't just America. These are people who all over the world. You know, that's the great thing about the internet. You know, there's no limit at this point. No. Except South Korea. Right. <laughs> you I like Don't do that when I'm drinking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to spill over the camera. <clears throat> oh man. No, but you're right. I mean, you're you're not you're not just reaching a couple hundred thousand or a million. You're you're reaching hundreds of millions of people yeah. that have access now to to all this and i you know i i think it's great i i i'm happy as hell for you to see you back on the television um doing what you like to do um it's a i i like the fact that it's going to be something set up uh a little differently to 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 give a little something else to the uh to the field and all that i i think it's a great idea to have two people that have never done it before but have experienced different things I think it's a hell of an idea, and I, I wish you all the best of luck in it. Thank you. Now, hopefully we can uh, – like I said, I can't wait for Friday night. 
I, it's 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 just <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. I really am. It, it's it's something that we've been well ever since Jason first you know, said that you were going that you got this and you you just announced yeah. other things and I'm like holy shit I can't wait because he had to keep. I know you had to keep some things quiet for a long time, but I, I and I'm, yeah. I'm oh, privileged yeah. that you come on and talk with us first. That that's kind of that's. So thanks. basically, I, I told <clears throat> Jason that as soon as um, I was able to get back into the well, as soon as one one as soon as I wanted to do interviews, and two as soon as I was able to to do them, that I would let him know because I mean he's been trying to get me on the show for a while, but there's, I didn't really have a lot to say. So this is what um, you get for riding on Jason's coattails. You get to actually be the one of the first interviews with it. Thanks, Jason. Yeah, definitely one of the first. Absolutely. Thanks, Jason. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. Oh, whatever. Son of a bitch. <laughs> no, I just, I, I mean, I honest and truly was extremely excited for you. And I know that you couldn't say a whole lot about whatever. And I just kept telling you whenever, whenever you can talk, man, let's, yeah, let's get it out there, man. I, I, like I said, I'm happy for you. I, I think it's a, it's a good opportunity. And I, uh, I like to see you back on the television, man, doing what you do, right? Me too. Right? <laughs> I like watching me on TV. <laughs> you know, I really don't. I fucking hate it. Um, I, you know, I mean, I, I, ugh, no. I'm not a big fan of how I look on TV. Although, did you see that that um, that promo pic? I was like, oh shit! Actually, that one looks all right. Yeah, that looks real good. Picture. Yeah, and that was, um, I was. I, I wonder if they photoshopped it. I hope they did. Um, okay. but yeah, was, the only I ones, was, the only ones I could find to, to advertise for tonight were the old GHI ones. So I, know, I, I sent him, I sent him the one. He was like, "Where the hell did you find that?" Yeah, well, well you know what that was? That wasn't even GHI. I think that was like about three years ago. I um, I went to, a, I did a, 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 a an event in Australia. Um, oh, I went back to the quarantine station, and um. I, I'm pretty sure that was back at the quarantine station because all the photographs around that, because I, I was like, what the, because one, I didn't even know that photograph had been taken. I don't even know where that photograph came from. I completely forgot I'd even done it. So I went through my Facebook because I was like, where'd you get it? Go Facebook. I'm like, damn. So now I'm scrolling through my Facebook and I find it and I'm like, what the hell? And then I look around it and it's all these pictures from Australia. So I'm like, oh, it must have been from there. Right. But I had no idea that picture was even there. I had, I'd, I'd never, I don't even, it's one of those things where like, I've never seen that. But <laughs> yeah. surprise! It was a it was a special pick from the paparazzi, man. You had no yeah. idea it was taken. Oh no, it was totally set up. I didn't have an equipment case with me when I went. That was one of the ones from like the uh, the team that was actually out there hosting the event. I mean, I completely set that picture up at the time. I just right. completely forgot all about it. <laughs> <laughs> how much? Um, how much are you allowed to talk about the show? Are you? Are you well, allowed to say? Watch it Friday. I mean, like, did you did you have a? Throw, throw a bunch of questions out, and I'll answer them or not. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, what um, you say? You did six episodes, right? Yes, I'm allowed to say that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now we just feel like being an ass, but I'm not. Um. Oh, I want to see how this goes because I know Paul could be an ass back. So this could be oh, he's good. Oh, he this could be entertaining as all get out for me. I'm just gonna sit back and enjoy the show. No, no, no. I was I was gonna ask the old cliche. What was your did Did you have a favorite investigation or one that stuck out in your mind more than the other ones? You know uh, the cliche questions. What favorite episode? Uh, yeah, I have a favorite episode. <laughs> <laughs> can you is can it, you tell us one through you, six? Can you tell us is it? <laughs> <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, or six. I think it's two. I think. Okay. Hang on. Uh, yeah, I think it's number two. Um, and the cool thing is, is so the thing of this one, and I'll, I'll tell you a little bit. Um, I'll try not to spoil it. Um, we went into this investigation thinking it was one thing. You know, like, so you guys, you guys are paranormal investigators. So you guys have done this as, as well for quite a few years. Um, you, you get a case, you get someone who's like, sends you the, their information and you like, you look at it and you're like, okay, I, okay, I, I can see what's going on here, All right? Well, that's what I did. I was looking at it going, okay, this, I, I see what's going on. Um, and it was nothing like that. It was, it was completely not what I expected. And in fact, um, so much so that even the production company, because when I realized what was going on, I had to 
tell the production company what was actually happening because they were there under the impression of something else. They're like, see, so we get there and they have an idea of what they need to do. You know, okay, so because of this, we need to make sure that we get footage of this, this, and this, and this. Well, A wasn't the problem. It was B that was the problem. And now we had to change where we were going. Okay, so hang on a minute. So now instead of us spending time doing this, we have to concentrate on something else. Um, and so much so that we actually had to get, uh, so we reached out on social media for a voodoo priestess. And we flew her in from, um, from Louisiana. Wow. Because, yeah, things were not, and I, I know nothing of voodoo, you know, and that, again, that's my point. Social media, we reached out, somebody was able to help us, because I don't know anything about voodoo. Do you mm-hmm. do? That, that voodoo that you do? What about I you? don't know anything. <laughs> I know a couple people that have practiced voodoo, but that's about it. Yeah, right. So, you know, there's, there's so much out there that I still don't know and I don't understand. And I was able to be part of that was, that was amazing. And um, it was really cool. It was just a cool thing to be part of and to witness. But see that, that right there in its own right, from what I've seen at the shows, and, and don't get me wrong, I don't watch a lot of them. I really don't. Like I said, I didn't have cable for five or six years because sure. I just disassociated from it. But that's bringing a perspective of actually getting a chance to educate people. And that's yes. a perspective that is not done on any of the formatted shows now where they don't use right. the chance to educate people in that. And that's, that's a cool perspective that I, I'm looking forward to. And that's the kind of, see, <laughs> me showing two people who don't know how to do it, how to do it, is like me showing the audience how to, how do, how it. to do it. Yeah, the whole so education the perspective. The whole premise is, 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 is also, you know, me teaching these guys, but there's an audience watching as well who some of those have never done it before. So Absolutely. it's it's kind of like we're all teaching, we're all learning, and, and you know. And even for the ones that have done it, like Jason and I, I've never, I can't wait to see about voodoo because I've never had a case that involved that. So that's going to be something very educational and, and, and opening up a new perspective for us to watch yeah. out for whenever we're on our adventures. With it, an it's definitely cool to witness for sure. So that's well, be- and here's and and here's the icing on the cake is the fact that cake and an, and another yeah cake what and it's, and just another reason why. I respect the hell out of you is the fact that you didn't, you didn't play it off and be like, Oh, Oh, the voodoo. Oh yeah. Let's see what we're going to have to do here is, uh, we're going to have to do this, this and this and play this music in the background and, um, yeah. play some sage and, and this will all be good. If you, yeah. if you, if you don't know, reach out to somebody that does know, exactly. don't, don't act like, you know, cause you're only going to cause more problems. Well, that's the thing as well. And that, I, that's, so I've, I, you know, you know, I, you know, I, I don't claim to know things I don't know. I, I tell people as it is. You know, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty much a no bullshit type of guy. I, I don't like to screw around with that stuff. And there's things that I just, I don't understand, and that I, I probably won't ever really understand because things like voodoo, that's a culture. That's something that, that you know, is, is, is deeply embedded in your, your ancestors, your, your, your you know, the way you live and, and, you know, everything about you and your family, you know. And so, and there's, there's um, another thing, like, so, um, uh, episode one, uh, this is, it's, it's in New Jersey. Um, there's a whole thing, like, we, so we discovered that there's a, the, the land that the, the, the house was on is um, burial ground, is, is um, Native American burial ground. Um, and you know, if, if you're going to bring somebody into cleanse the house, would you just grab a psychic? Do you grab, you know, a medium or do you find someone who's actually tied to the land You get someone tied to the land? So again, we reached out and we found, um, this, this shaman woman who like 10th generation, you know, um, native American, um, you know, she's still a medium, but she's, uh, you know, uh, yeah. um, there's a natural, excuse me, there's a natural word for it. And I can't remember what the word is. Um, but it's like a shaman. It's not a shaman, but it's like that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, so she, she came in and then she did her thing because we, we need to get the proper people in to do the job right. You know, you don't call an electrician to fix a plumbing problem. Exactly. Unless of course they're a plumber and electrician, but 
you know, <laughs> you know I'm, I'm, that's, yeah. that's refreshing to hear because, like I said, uh, Jace was even alluding to that a lot of people think that they want to take it all to themselves. That's something that that I've uh, complained about within the field that people would think they can do everything when they really can't. And I agree yeah. that if you're gonna, if you have somebody that's that's pagan religion, you bring in somebody that's Catholic to do the blessing. The pagan isn't going to really pay attention because they don't understand what you're saying anyway. They have no. So bringing somebody that fits that that bill is, is, is seems right to me also. Right, right, and that's what we did. We we got the right person in for the job, and that's the other. You know, that's I think that that again sets us apart. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I'm looking forward to it even more now. Thanks. <laughs> and I got to wait. Said, I, yeah, I can't wait to. I, I was going to cancel my cable when he said Paul got a show. I'm like, oh, I got to keep my cable now. <laughs> it's your fault, Paul. I got pay extra each month, but I thank you for it. That's cool. Don't worry about it, man. You got it. Oh, absolutely. The wife would kill me if I canceled it now. Paul's yeah, right. On. Paul's going to be on. Stop it. It's Is there? Better to keep it for six weeks. Absolutely. And well, until unless of course I get picked up for a second season, which hopefully, I mean, there's no reason for it to not. But we'll see. We'll see. Is it? Does it air every Friday? Do you know? Yeah, it'll be, yeah, it'll be every Friday for the next six weeks. Awesome. Gotcha. Awesome. Is Can't there, wait. Is there anything else you want to say or, or talk about the show that we haven't touched on? Or You only had two questions for me? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been asking any questions for an hour, bro. Well, yeah, but we're going to go for like a quick fire round. And oh, <clears throat> there's a question in the chat room. Mama D wants to call whatever to join us on uh, Stirring the Pot one night. Maybe not, Mama D. That's something he's really going to watch with his publicity agents. You don't know if he can lower his standards that low. Yeah. He <laughs> <laughs> no standards on that show. Yeah, there's, it's a, it's a free wide open. Uh, yeah. he, 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 there, there is no, no depth to that. Yeah, so no, he's, no. he's got to he's got to look at his image nowadays. He's got one we don't. <laughs> yeah. Paul Paul would have to wear a mask and come under the name of like Juan or some shit. <laughs> there you go, the, uh, the masked paranormal investigator. That's right. <laughs> Change the voices and everything. That'd be fun. So, no, I mean I I don't I I I'm kind of treading on thin water here because I don't want to ask a bunch of questions because I want people to tune in and watch. So I don't yeah. want to, I, I don't want to give, you know, I, I don't want to talk about all six episodes and then everybody's <laughs> like, Oh, well now we know what the next six weeks are about. And but, well, um, I'm, I'm just going to give you a little, little sort of teasers for it anyway, you know, so, you know, that, that, and that's, I mean, to be fair, um, they, they did put a press release out with the, the, with the um, show titles and where we were going to be. Um, all right. So, so people need to go find that. Ep- that's all the information ep- they need to know watch episode episode one's in new jersey where was episode two filmed i think episode two might be the uh oregon i think oregon Oregon? yeah all right Uh, and once again all these are in residentials or things like that you're helping people like how things started out with helping people not going to these big locations yeah yeah it's not like with ghi where we went to castles and stuff this is actually you know we go to people's homes um, the only exception, there is one that's a, um, a family business. It's a family-run business, which was a me. It was a um, it was a barbecue joint, and they made chocolate. They had like a chocolate factory and barbecue, um, and they had this like it, it's got to have been like eight, maybe ten feet long smoker. Oh my god! Like, in heaven, they were smoking meat like the whole time, and that that, and then like, and then and to top it off, they make chocolate as well. I mean, it was just. Barbecue and, and chocolate. Uh, uh, yeah, what? I guess Sam Henderson on one of the watch parties asked, uh, "Was there a case in which you were unable to help?" No, I'm good at what I do. <laughs> he is. <laughs> that's why he's back because he's good. Well, and that's the thing. It, it, you know, I, I say I'm good at what I do, um, but the thing is, is like you know, the reason we were able to help is because we reached out and got the right people for the job. Right. You know, I agree so with that. It's not necessarily like I fixed it, um, or, or or you know my team fixed it, but we got the right person in to to to, to do the job right. You know. Any uh, any demonic any demonic cases? No, but but maybe there's a case where they think it is. Gotcha. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe there is. 
Maybe there is a demon. I don't know. <laughs> I hate that word so bad anymore. Are, I've heard it so much. Are all these? Are are all these? Did you find that they're tied oh. to the tied right. to the families and that kind of stuff? Or there was some. Most of it's I think tied to the land or to the area. Um, yeah. Okay. So episode one is New Jersey. Episode two is the Oregon case. Um, take us to take us to episode three. Uh, we are in Massachusetts. Any yeah. like a like a witch kind of thing, or nothing to do with witches? This was um, this is a uh, theater in Norwood, which is just it's it's north of Boston. Um, and the cool thing there is, I don't know if you noticed when you when I was showing you the, the room, there's there's a whole well, you see the Nuka Cola thing, right? So. Right. Um, one of my favorite games is uh, Fallout. Um, on the, I, I played that on the PlayStation. And um, Fallout 4 was based in Massachusetts. Um, and the first time we flew out there, um, basically I was there like, uh, like three days earlier than I needed to be. They sort of flew me out accidentally early. Um, I don't know how someone flies me out accidentally early, but they did. And so... Basically, they rented me a car, and I, I was able to go wherever I wanted. Um, and I didn't even remotely put two and two together and, and you know, um, go to Salem. But, right. um, but what I did do is I went to Boston because I, I, I was, it was, there was a reason. So during my time uh, waiting, um, there was one of the things in the notes uh, of the investigation was that um, there was something I needed to find um, so I could build um, a piece of equipment or, you know um, so I actually spent a day driving around um, going to like thrift stores and things like that looking for this particular thing that I needed for the investigation and as I was driving around um, I noticed that there's a, there was a place there called Jamaican Plain um, in Massachusetts, and I was, it, it, you know, and, and I was like, "Huh, Jamaican Plains is like that one in Fallout," because you know, again, I hadn't put two and two together at this point, and I was like, "Oh my God, hang on a minute!" And then I realized that Fallout Four is based in Massachusetts and, and, and outside of Boston. So the next day, what I did is I drove into Boston, and I basically pulled up all the landmarks that were in uh, the Fallout. And I just took pictures of me with the actual landmark, and then I did a whole side by side thing of me with the, the actual building, and then the building in the game. And I just had a bit of fun doing that, you know. Uh, you know, I, I, you know, it was very immature and whatnot, but I enjoyed myself. <laughs> and I got to tour around Boston. And it was really cool. I kind of had toured around Boston in the game, so I was like, oh, I'm going to go up to here, and I'm going to go see the church, the, the North Church, and you know, over there is is something else, and. You know, it was fun because I was like, I know where I'm kind of going ish because of the game. Was it very similar to the game? It is similar as far as sort of like where things are. I mean, some things are like, I, I mean, I did post them online and I'll, um, I'll try and find the original post and relink it and that. But um, I remember seeing some of them, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was just cool. I mean, and I just, you know, I took advantage of the fact I was in, in a location that I could do something like that. That's awesome. That would yeah. be cool. Yeah, so oh, right. So hang on a minute. We're in Massachusetts. What's after that? Um, episode four. Episode four, I believe, will be in Texas. Texas? Yeah, Texas. Um, that's the, uh, the barbecue chocolate joint. Man, I'm going to go to Texas now. Yeah, you'll like this one. It's a cool town as well. It's a historic town that we were in. Um, after that, <coughs> Tucson, Arizona. That had to have been fun. Yeah, it was different. It wasn't, I mean, well, well, Jason knows why. It's not the investigation. The investigation was cool. Um, and I don't know, I don't know how they edited this one, but um, I'll be interested to see this one, uh, how this has been edited. Um, but yeah, like I said earlier, that Tucson, Arizona is where I actually first had my team. That's where I first joined the paranormal team. So, um, okay. yeah, I used to live around there. So I did make sure I, I got, I did go to my old burrito place. 
buy myself some burritos. Right. Uh, what was yeah. the name of your What was the name of your team when you were out there? Uh, SPI, Sonoran Paranormal Investigations. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, they're still going. Completely different team as well now, though. But SPI still still exists. Um, it was actually a, a non-profit organization. It was actually registered. No so, shit. Yeah, no, it's, a, it's an actual legitimate business. Um, you know, so, you know, as far as sort of as non-profits and stuff. Um, gotcha. Yeah, but um, let's say the, the team, from what I understand, is, is completely different to how it was. But, um, yeah, um, that was one, that was a team that uh, I founded back in, I think it was like, 2006, 2007. So, yeah, that was, well, at, least, that was at least it's still going. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was interesting to, to find out they were still going because um, I obviously stepped back away from that for a while. I think ten years, um, right. you know, because I moved out of Tucson and things like that. So, um, but then after that, we're back to Texas, and I think that's where we end end the season. Um, yeah, that's it. Yeah, so six episodes. Um, where's Where's the last uh, Where's the last episode? It, like about, what location? Is it yeah. a house or? Oh no, it's a house. Gotcha. Yes, it's a it's a house that's a historic house, um, very old, um, very interesting. And that was I had to build so much stuff for that one. I mean, without going into too many, you know, it was it was one of these things where I had to build. A bunch of little things. So, no, yeah. I'm really interested. Gotcha. Took, took about two days. So that was good. Yeah. So I don't know. Again, I don't know how they edit all this stuff. And obviously, um, I have complete faith that, that, that it's going to be an amazing show. Um, and uh, I, I do. I highly suggest everybody tunes in. And that was the one thing you talked about earlier, which, which, I mean, doing our stuff is in a small type from what you're doing, but sure. you talk about investigating a, a week. So you are you're on location for five days, seven days. How many hours a day are you? Are you guys on location? Yeah, I mean, it's 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 a so it is a, it's a, it's maybe six days. Um, it, it could be five or six days, um, depending on, on what's needed. Um, I so they do a lot of like they go in there, they do their prelim stuff. Um, but like we'll investigate for you know a couple of nights. Obviously, I've still got to review everything. Um, you know, it's you know, and then I might have to go back in and do some more investigating. We might have to make a few calls and, and reach out to get somebody in. Um, and that's the other thing is they flew these people in like the same day. You know, we were able to find people who were like able to just drop everything and get come come out. That was that's awesome. amazing. Yeah, that was awesome. Hell oh, yeah, that'd be cool and shit. Right. Uh, you know, that was the thing as well. It's like a lot of this stuff had to sort of like we we'll, we we're just sort of making it up on the fly sort of thing because like okay, well this is the situation now. How do we fix this, or what do we got to do to do you know for this? And so um, you know that's when we're like, okay, let's reach out and see if we can find someone. Hell yes, yeah. and it's cool to see like we keep saying it over and over again to see people reaching out like that and to and to, to to get the right the right person for the right spot in the right time. Right. That's that's absolutely just awesome. I can't wait to see that. Just, <laughs> it's such a different perspective of what's normally with. No matter what level they're filming on, most people always think that they're the know-it-all and their team's the, the sure. end-all, and therefore they can't bring anybody else in. And it's so nice to see somebody showing that perspective that there is a lot of networking and a lot of cooperation really going on out there, more right, than what people right. think there is. Yeah. I mean, like I said, you're, you're, you're only going to see a glimmer of what really went on because it is only – I mean, to, technically what we're looking at, like 43 minutes you know, of, of episode. Yeah. Once you once you add the commercials and everything else, mm -hmm. so you know a whole week down to forty two minutes, you're going to miss a lot. There you are. You know, we we had ground penetrating software. We had, you know, um, what else did we have? We had a bunch of stuff. My God, ground penetrating you know. software. Yes, mm -hmm. you're <clears throat> ground penetrating software. You sure you guys went up on Oak Island? We had radars out there. Yeah, we had we had, we, we had a ground penetrating radar. 
um, to determine, you know, what was underneath the yeah, grounds, oh, yeah. things like that. Um, you know, we had to confirm that we were working with an Indian burial ground. You know? yeah. We had to confirm stuff. You know, I mean, technically, I guess you could say that most of America is probably an Indian burial ground. Oh, you know, without before a doubt. Before America, you know, but... You know, we, we try to we try to confirm what we're finding, and we try to confirm stories and things like that. So it's awesome. I yeah, I can't wait. I can't Good, wait. but I gotta wait. But I can't wait. I gotta wait. Yeah, that's true. Damn it! But it's only it's only what another four days, really. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, we're we're pretty at the end of of, of Monday now, I'm, so. I'm yeah. so lost with days right now. I've been off for over a week already, and I got to go back well, to work till like January second. So I'm I have no idea what day of the week it is half the time. Well, I uh, I was I was in Florida for the weekend. We flew into Florida like we flew into Florida on Saturday. Flew back out um, last night. I didn't get home until like two o'clock this morning, um, and then I had to be up for work at six. So I'm I'm absolutely shattered, and <laughs> I can tell you that, that that my wife and you know I'm sure. Kids are just as tired. I bet so. so. Yeah. Well, we appreciate yeah. you joining us. And, Absolutely. Uh, Taking the time you know, out Getting the us. word out. Yeah, getting the word out and um, sitting down with the two of us and uh, yeah. being I'm our first guest over here at uh, LEP Productions. Well, thank you. It's an honor, man. It's like I said, you know, I told you I'd let you know when I could. No, and I appreciate it. So Absolutely. Every, everybody. Trending Fear, Travel Channel, December 20th. Paul Bradford, Adam Ellis, and Jen Lewis, 11 o'clock, 10 Eastern, or 10 Central. What is it? Probably uh, 8 uh, yeah. o'clock out west. Yeah. Yeah. Give it a watch. Give it a watch. It sounds interesting. Seems like there's going to be some different things happening than, uh, you know, just your average show. Um, appreciate everybody watching. We had just a ton of people in here and i'm sorry that we couldn't say hi to everybody as we were going on but uh one big blanket hi everybody <laughs> right right there's a blanket hi <laughs> paul you I got uh, anything else you want to say about uh, trending fear or again where they can find all your stuff because i mean you're you know you're not just doing the tv man you, no. you make a ton of stuff you're you're building equipment you're working with um, go stop you're just doing a ton <laughs> Honestly, I would I would just stick, you know, join me over on Twitter and, and, and the Instagram um, and the Facebook um, because, you know, I'm always posting what I'm up to. Um, I might not, you know, I'm, I'm also posting a bunch of rubbish on there as well, you know, um, and funny memes and things like that. But, you know, um, yeah, join me on there. I mean, if I'm doing something, that's probably one of the first places I'll let everybody know. So. Awesome. I'll be. I think I'm already following you on Facebook when you're. Uh, you're not on your TV page. I'll be happy to find you on Instagram yet. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll I'm stalk you. I mean, I try to post stuff regularly. I'm not great at keeping up with it, but. You know, I will stalk I you know. and try to share it as much as I can to help promote it anywhere that I can. Hey, I appreciate every everything. Thank you, man. Jason, with that said. Hey, Paul. Thanks, brother. I love you. Give sign you a hug and a kiss for me. Hopefully, we can get together after the holidays. I hope so. I'm, I'm happy as hell for you. Congratulations on the new show, and um, got all the best of luck to you, brother. We'll see you here soon. Thank you. Take care, guys. Thanks, everybody, for joining us on LEP Productions. And. Uh,